Like when I was rowing rivers, you know, it, it, it's like you get up above a rapid you've never been on before. You're exploring a new river and you're looking down at this rapid and you're looking at it from above and it looks like other things you've done. And you think, yeah, I got this. Then you go back to your boat and you start off into the river and you realize, I don't know where I am. I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know what the entry point is. I Suddenly this became much more complicated than it looked like it was because I didn't know it was going to be like that. I didn't know I didn't know. And it's I was arrogance, wasn't right? Careful. It's another way it was, of saying arrogant. It's a way of saying arrogance. Yeah. Yeah. It, like we are hubris, right? It's just yeah. yeah, I can I got this. Yeah, I got this. Right. It's it, I don't need it, to look at a map. No. I don't need I, to ask know? somebody who's been there. Right, right. I don't need to walk the rapid, look at it from the bottom, right? Right. I mean, come on, golf, right? You're going to make a putt. Oh, I got this five feet. I get it. And you, <laughs> right. you, you don't look at it. You don't even <laughs> see that there's this bend, right? You can name any sport and have it has full of examples like that. And so I think we do go, oh, we're going down the checklist. Ah, simple, predictable. Yeah, okay, got it. And it wasn't. It wasn't. Hmm. Not for you, it wasn't. Maybe for somebody hmm. else it was, but hmm. not for you, it wasn't. Hmm. And and then when Bill says he's coming back to his checklist, I think honestly what he probably means is he's coming coming back in humbled yeah. to the checklist. Oh, definitely. He definitely and, and gave that vibe. Reining in, reining in the the range of companies that he's gonna willing to look at. Yeah. Which is to the point I made earlier in the when we were talking in the podcast about how this is simple, but it's not easy. And and the funny thing about it is if you keep it simple. If you if you refuse to get confident, if you right, if you if you can stay away from arrogance and stay away from this feeling like I got this, stay humble and stay simple. It, it, honestly, it's like it's like uh, what's the guy's name in ah oh, that Peter Sellers thing, the wonderful short story about Chancy Gardner who became the president of the United States. And he all he had was these simple aphorisms. He was really sort of an idiot. <laughs> and he rose rapidly to become the president of the United States. Peter Sellers does this amazing job in this old movie. And it's, <laughs> it's, uh -huh. it's a sense that if you just stick with the basics, you can answer these questions with the basics. You could just stay with that. Don't get outside any to become clever mm, mm. arrogance I, yeah arrogance in other words Bu buffett says many times this is not a game that's won by really smart people mm, it's not mm. a 160 beats a 100 iq test mm. it isn't that way this isn't where clever wins this is where keeping it simple is his mantra jump over six inch bars not six foot bars and Bill found himself jumping over, you know, six foot bars, thinking they were easy. And you trip up on them and you splat on your face. And that's the hardest thing to do when you're managing money is to keep it to the six inch bars because there's not very many of them. There's not a lot of, right? If you're not, if you're not in a market meltdown, if you're not in a giant recession, then there's not very many six inch bars. It's like everybody can spot a six inch bar. You have to, you have to wait until all of the institutional guys are bailing out for reasons that have nothing to do with that six inch bar. They I think it's, I think it's a really beautiful point. And I'm glad that you made it that, yeah, you can have excellent principles and we can talk all day long and for however many hours we've created with this podcast. But if you don't stick to it in the moment and have that level of humility and, 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 uh, checking yourself um then it all it doesn't matter how much time you've spent learning all the different things it's yeah, about you, sticking you have to a notebook it. full of pages of information about this company and think you've really done your homework exactly and you haven't because you or, don't or you the or you have and you decided that for some reason it you know it's okay that it's not in a dominant market position or something like that. So, so crazily, so, uh, we have, we've talked about the advantages you have as an individual investor in that no one is looking over your shoulder 
yelling, you have to swing at this pitch. You have you have to constantly be buying companies and selling companies and being active or I'm going to take my money away from you. You don't have that, you guys. You just have you. And you can sit for two years and not put money in anything except a government bond and just sit there and wait for a really easy opportunity. And that's, of course, what we've been urging you to do. And and what the second advantage that you have is that you know you don't know a lot of stuff. Come on, let's let's be real, right? We're not geniuses out there. We're not guys that went to Harvard. We're not women that went, well, you know, Danielle went to good schools. Okay, so you're smarter. But I'm not. I'm, you know, I, I flunked out of one community college. Come on. I, so, I don't like all this like, oh, somebody's smarter and somebody's not. Like it's, it's just sort of like true, we're though. not Those we're not like super against smart people. each other. Yes, they can Bill Ackman's like insanely smart and he screwed up. And somebody else is less smart and can also screw up. It's not a it's not a competition about who's smarter and who's less smart. No, but when when you're smart, you tend to become arrogant. Don't you think? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I do think the, when it comes to investing, it's, and you know, I've talked a lot about this, like it's a very interesting yin and yang, the push me, pull you thing of kind of that like confidence, which veers into arrogance for a lot of people who love this stuff. And the fear that needs to veer more towards confidence that a lot of us who don't naturally come to this stuff feel. So I find that when people talk a lot about like how you have to like dial yourself back and not get arrogant and check your checklist and all that stuff, that's because that's what they need. That's because they veer towards that extreme. And what I need is something different. <laughs> I don't really veer towards arrogance that much. So what I need is actually a checklist that like is probably roughly the same, but it veers towards building my confidence and making really clear to myself that I've checked all the boxes and, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and all the other uh, hackneyed metaphors. Well, so, I think, you know, building toward a certain level of confidence is great. And that's what, of course, we're trying to do with this podcast, with teaching you guys. But going past that is dangerous. And and it's right. really good to stay, stay humble, man, just stay humble and stay skeptical. And without making too fine a point on it, Charlie Munger says, stay pessimistic. You yeah, know, it's just like, hey, yeah. look, look for the dark side because it's out actually there. I love that. Stay. I think that works for everybody. I think that works for everybody. Whether you're somebody who's like terrified to buy your first stock, or you know, you used to like day trade because you thought it was fun, which are basically like the two extremes that I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think both those kinds of people, if reminded to stay pessimistic, that works. That works. I like that because it, it brings you back to like, Oh, what if the worst case scenario actually happens? Oh, what if not the worst case scenario, but just something like a little bit, not so good happens. How does that affect this company? Like it reminds you to come back to all the scenarios of negativity of um, things not going the way that you hope. And when you're about to go into an investment, like a real true investment, of course, that's entirely, literally about putting your money into optimism. That's putting your money saying like, I'm making a bet that this thing is going to do well. And here's all the reasons why. And I can have an entire notebook filled with reasons why. And still bad things can happen. And so that, that I really like that reminder. Stay pessimistic. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about how to invest, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.